So let's get started. We are watching the game from King Hunter against Protected Pass Pawn. And King Hunter started out with Knight F3. And we'll go through the opening pretty quickly because it's all mainline theory. It's a Catalan. B3 is not the main move here, but I'm supposing that you looked at this beforehand and uh, that you like this move. I mean, there are other options, right? There's Knight C3, there's Queen C2. I'm not a big Catalan expert, I have to admit, so I cannot really tell you what's the greatest move here. I don't know, uh, but I just know there are many options. Bishop B2, I mean, this is all very sensible, so I don't, there's nothing here that I would like to criticize in any way. Rook a c1 also makes sense. h6. Now queen b1. I think it's also a decent move. I mean the other move would be to go for e4 immediately. But okay, get the queen out of the c file where it's right opposing the rook. So queen b1, knight h7, but now now your opponent has just removed a piece from the center. The knight was aiming at e4 so now it feels like it's a perfect moment to go for e4 right and you also have to ask yourself well what what is my opponent up to knight h7 it looks a little bit odd probably wants to go f5 to um, get a better grip on the center and get like kind of a stormwall structure and so in those two ways first off well what did my opponent just do and how does it change the position? And then secondly, what does my opponent want to do next and how can I prevent it? Both these moves would lead you to e4 and that's actually it's a standard move in these positions I think because I don't know what else to do. I mean you played knight e5 which is also a decent move but at some point one always plays e4 puts on more pressure on the center so now would have been a good moment I think. Okay, if black doesn't take, you can gain some more space with e5. Uh, and if he takes, you'll take with the knight, of course. Knight of 6. I mean, the knight is now stupid on h7. Obviously, black will not play f5 because that would leave him with a weakness on e6. So, knight of 6. And now, for example, take. If knight takes, you could put your knight on e5, which looks pretty decent. And if bishop takes, knight d2 bring another knight to e4 and also what is important here not allowing black to play his typical break in the center with c5 because then his bishop would be hanging so this is just a little bit more comfortable for white because of the space advantage and you just want to watch out that you don't allow black to equalize with c5 you always want to either well not allowed because the bishop is hanging or be able to answer with d5 in a good manner. So this is the typical stuff people do here I'd say. But knight e5 is also a very typical move. Just feels like e4 was a little bit more natural. Takes, takes and now your opponent still goes f5. Okay. Alright. But now I think you could have taken on Poisson. E takes f6. Just take this pawn off. And it leaves black with some weaknesses. Namely, the pawn on e6 could be a target by means of maybe sometimes bishop h3. And also the square e5 for your knight. So now I looked at two ways that black can take back the pawn. Uh, g takes f6 we don't have to consider because of queen g6 so it really only leaves knight takes f6 or bishop takes after knight takes now knight f3 makes sense and just put a knight on e5 and the knight is very unpleasant there and also you might notice that the king is more open now now that one of the pawns in front of it has moved and the g6 square is weakened as well so that's pretty nice for you and if bishop takes f6, well, I'm sure knight f3 is also possible here, but it seems that e4 is, is quite nice uh, to gain some space. Play e5. And there are some important points here. If black goes d4, 
F4 would be possible now, but there's also the position of pawn sacrifice playing E5 to open up the E-file. Black has to take pretty much. I mean, nothing else makes sense. And then Queen D3 and putting pressure on the D and E-file and also having nice squares. And you can see the black piece are not getting into a game. This bishop still cannot be freed because it's hanging. And I know I'm making a lot of errors here, but I'm hoping you guys get the point. The knight can come to e4, but you'll probably just want to win back this pawn. And when this pawn falls, then black is left with a weakness on e6. So it's a quite a nice uh, positional pawn sacrifice. And if black takes some b2 first and then goes d4, I mean, otherwise you can just go e5 again. Just very nice position. Um, or you can also consider taking on d5, but you need to be sure about that, not that it simplifies the position too much. And if here d4 once again e5 and just works out perfectly once again, black cannot play c5, the move he would like to play because of his bishop. And in some case, you can even go c5 yourself. In fact, that's, that's quite strong. Not allowing this bishop to come to life. All right, so e takes f6, just take this pawn and then play in the center would have been a decent alternative here. Let me check the chat real quick. Mm, if you had any questions. So there's some discussion about Do you know anyone who explains the Catalan? Ah, Georg Meyer, I see. All right. So, let's get back to the game. Knight f3 makes also sense to me, aiming to d4. Now your opponent plays a strange move, a mice g5, which is not really achieving that much and it's, it's weakening the black weakening the black square considerably. So you go knight d4, very natural, very good. But this is probably the the well this and the next move. Those are the most critical moments in the game. So far the game has been pretty normal. Um, and here you could have I mean could have blown your opponent out of the building pretty much. Uh, with two different ways. So you go f4, but f4, well, it stabilized upon e5, but it's not doing much. It feels to me, it's not improving your position in any way. It's like, okay, you play f4, but if you had another move, what would you play next, right? It doesn't, doesn't achieve anything as far as I can see. So there were two ways to crack open the position. That's what you want to do here because the black king you see two of the pawns in front of him have already moved. There's not a lot of defense left. And one way would be to go e4. I understand there's a difficult move to find, but one just has to look for it. If one looks for it, then it becomes soon very obvious. It's very strong. Okay, first pawn is f takes e4, is bishop h3 when black cannot defend a pawn on e6 and black just lose material already at least in exchange on c8 so that's the first point the second point is that after d takes e4 now the d file has opened and white can go rook cd1 when there's not a good way to deal with the threat of knight takes f5 hitting the queen on d7 because the queen pretty much needs to stay on d7 to defend the pawn on e6 and the pawn e6 is so crucial to a black position to keeping everything together. If the pawn e6 falls, then later on this pawn can move, this bishop becomes open. Uh, it's horrible for black. I mean, let's just say queen e8 is for uh, demonstration sakes, rook f7, and now maybe even further undermining the black pawn structure completely, g4, or knight d4 uh, followed by g4, but g4 looks really nice 
Of course, you can also think about F3. You just want to open it up, right? And that's also a problem with F4. You are limiting yourself in the future. You don't have those breaks available anymore. Because the pawn will be on F4. You cannot play E4 anymore unless it works out tactically, but you cannot prepare with F3, for example. Does black have any other moves after e4? Well, he could go c5 now, as he did in the game, but it's not difficult to see that this is just a crushing sacrifice. Because you're just just winning the two center pawns, I mean not winning them in exchange for the knight, but just e6 and so on. And um, this is just winning. I mean, what else to say? I don't even know what to suggest. Queen g6. But now even e takes f5. If rook takes f5, bishop e4. Oof. I can't even look at this. <laughs> it's just all... It just plays itself, right? Um, so e4 was very strong, but I, I understand that's a difficult move to see. I mean, it would take certainly me some time to find it. Um, but there's another move which is also very strong, which is g4. And I think this move's easier to find because, well, you're also like attacking the pawn chain, and um, black doesn't really have a good way to deal with this. Of course, he cannot take, that would allow the queen in, and the position falls apart. And um, if, well, c5 is a similar story, I think. Or c5, there might be um, also c takes d5, possibly. But I think there, there are probably several options. And if bishop c5 and g takes f5, well, what to do? I mean, if e takes f5, e6 looks crushing, and if bishop takes d4, now if white had to take back, then rook takes f5 wouldn't be that bad yet. I mean, it would be still pretty bad, um, but not that bad. But now you can take an e6 intermediate move, and um, you're up a pawn plus weak black king plus bishop here, and so on and so forth. So this is winning or very close to winning um yeah so those two moves were really good uh you could also play differently but yeah in one way or the other attack the black pawns that would be the way to go and also f4 I'm not sure if it's doing something prophylactically because what your opponent did next was to go c5. And yes, after f4, c5, you have a good way to reply to that, but uh, actually you didn't do it. Um, so that kind of tells me, hmm, maybe you didn't consider the move by your opponent, well, well what your opponent wants to do next. Otherwise, it could also, I would also consider like playing rook to d1. So if c5, I could just bang out knight takes e6, okay? And then again, just get these pawns rolling. Uh, this, this should be really good at once again. All right. So let's see what happened in the game. We played f4, now c5. And now after you move the knight to b5, uh, your advantage is gone. Because black gets d4 in, and what we try to avoid the whole time, right, to that black gets this bishop active, well, that's happening now, and he's actually gaining space and restricting, restricting your bishop. So here we had to move c takes d5 available. And that's, you know, a classic tactic. Um, just always consider the, the capture moves. So bishop takes d5, if e takes d5, there's once again e6 followed by knight takes f6, f5, so that's no good for black. And if e, c takes d4, then d takes e6, and black cannot keep the bishop b7 protected, and you win back the piece with interest. 
So bishop takes c5. And now first, it's like, hmm, okay. Well, looks like black is doing okay, but then you need to check another capture move, right? How many capture moves do we have here? Not that many, right? We have f takes g5. Okay, that's not doing much. C takes d4. We have bishop takes c5, just a natural move, but black just takes back with the queen and hmm, not much happening there. Then we have knight takes e6. We can throw that out of the window pretty quickly after bishop takes e6. But then we check knight takes f5 and we'll be like, <laughs> hold on. Let's check this for a moment. Because if rook takes f5, there's e4. Or maybe even stronger. No, e4, right. e4 right away. And that's nice for white. The rook has to move and then take on d5. And great position. Let's say this, this, and now. Oh, oof. Ah, that hurts. Um. So rook takes f5 is no good. E takes f5 can be answered by a pin on the d file. And what well, regains the piece. And then you see those bishops, they're going to be monsters. Uh, bishop on d5 and then e6 might be coming next. And you're already up a pawn. We should not forget that either. So the best black can do is bishop takes g2. And now at the very least we can see, okay, I can take on e7 with check, intermediate move, and then take back the, the piece. That's pretty good. Um, to make it even better though, is to attack first the queen, rook cd1, but okay, this is a little bit advanced stuff, obviously, um, because one has to realize now that bishop d5 doesn't work due to rook takes d5. But okay, this advanced stuff, I mean, you don't need to see this before you play it, you could be just like, okay, I'll take on e7, take on g2, I'm up a healthy pawn. All right, that's good. Um, and this is working here because queen takes d5, knight takes e7, and e takes d5, knight takes h6, followed by e6 check, picking up the queen, monster bishop. So that means here, black would need to move the queen, but now you take on e7, you see the difference. White has gained a tempo, has moved the, the rook to a better position. And now insert another little check, why not? And then take on g2 and enjoy a very, very good position. Rook can come to d6. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, really, really bad for black. I guess after g takes f4, one wouldn't take back because of rook g8, but maybe just take an h6. Looks pretty good. All right, let's return to the game, but before I do so, let's check the chat. Why is my chat window so small? I have to do all this scrolling. All right, so Ian, you're saying e4, g4 was not a mechanic moves. We'll have them on the horizon next time a structure like this comes up. Very instructive ideas. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's always the thing. I was also just reading in a book recently why do we miss moves in general in chess because we're not looking for them um it's, it's as simple as that right if you're not keeping an eye out on all the possible moves like an engine would do uh, of course you don't need to look for all possible moves but you want to look for um, well all that makes sense in any any way right um as long as we're not looking for them we're not going to see them, right? So that's just a major takeaway for all of us all the time. Right? We just constantly have to be look on the lookout. All right. So let's get back to the game. And see what happened, knight b5, a6. And here you retreat the knight to a3. It would have been maybe better to go knight d6 to not have this bishop kind of buried. Um, okay, the knight can be allowed there. He takes d6. So this is kind of a, like a positional pawn sacrifice and black shouldn't take on d6 now. 
he should go d4 to close this bishop off because otherwise queen takes d6 you can go bishop e5 and you have a monster bishop i mean this bishop is worth definitely a pawn black doesn't have a counterpart that's an important part and of course his king is so open because he has moved these pawns so that makes your position quite nice and you can definitely create some threats on the long diagonal maybe play e3 rook fd1 and then at some point one can think about putting up a battery on the a1 h8 diagonal to harass the black king that's very nice compensation so black should go d4 but now still take on b7 and try to open it up again with e3 and it seems to me position is rather unclear here definitely more interesting or well definitely better than what we see in the game all right so just to another idea to keep in mind to sacrifice a pawn to open up the bishop especially when the black king or your opponent's king has been opened up so much and your opponent is lacking the the bishop of the same color as yours so knight a3 d4 takes takes queen d3 g4 and now now you're doing everything fine oh that was a little bit too quickly for my excuses uh you're doing everything fine rook to the d file e3 that's the way to go you just don't have an advantage anymore right your bishop is biting on this pawn e5 on the other hand the black pieces are not any better so it's fine so now you trade everything that's also very smart queen g2 the queen was well placed on the long diagonal the black queen so it's good to trade it off and the rooks come off and this is just a dead draw there's just one thing one needs to keep in mind is that the pawn on h3 is far advanced and that creates tactical resources for the pawn and that's really the only thing you have to keep in mind but unfortunately you weren't probably aware of this motive what we'll see in the game so there's really not not much you can do either you've seen this before or you haven't and if you haven't seen it before it's not easy to spot it so um it's just unfortunate and um, it will certainly not happen to you again so here your opponent kind of lured you into also moving your king closer to the to the queen side but i mean nothing is happening there if you just keep with your king just stay with your king over here there's nothing nothing going to happen really um, black will not be able to to break through just put a knight on e3 and that's pretty much it bishop to c3 nothing will happen but after king d3 unfortunately bishop h4 and um, that's it just because black has advanced the pawn so far um, and that's i mean something to consider for your own games as well if it's possible it's can be often useful to put a pawn on h6 or a6 h3 or a3 if you're black because it creates these tactical ideas in the end game and well when the piece on the board of course it creates mating ideas so it's, it's always nice to get this pawn most of the time it's nice to get the pawn very far up the board yeah bishop h4 it's nothing to do knight e3 bishop takes g3 yes you're stopping him from taking on h2 actually he could also take on h2 here i suppose that also works um but he just took an f4 simple enough he just won two pawns now the knight is coming and there's just nothing to do so yeah that's um tough to lose like that obviously since you were better the whole game pretty much and you had a uh, pretty much winning advantage at one point but um well that's chess as they like to say uh just one one um moment of uh 
not being aware or alert and suddenly can be all over and uh, I mean really there's not much to do here if you haven't seen this motive before like I said then it's not easy to spot in a game but in the future you'll be on the lookout whenever there's a pawn uh, of your opponent very close to queening let's say on the third rank that there can be these peace, peace sacrifices to uh, open up the way for the pawn all right let me check the chat again and you're saying the same thing that you'll not forget this motive ever again yeah I mean a lot in chess is like experience and pattern recognition so and that just comes with reading a lot reading a lot of books and seeing a lot of positions and also playing a lot of games obviously it's just that's just the way it goes right there's no shortcut to experience obviously so certainly this motive is a major takeaway for you from this game the other major takeaway i would say um was in this position uh, especially i mean it would be a different story maybe if the pawn was still on g7 even though potentially same the same e4 motive would work but especially after this move g5 after your opponent has opened up his king it makes a lot of sense to try to open up the position to get to his king because your king is safe but his king isn't so you want to open up the position and then if you try to look for ways then maybe g4 or even e4 comes to mind it's just we have to look look for the moves as well as here we always have to see okay well yes he attacks my knight so the most natural move would be to move it but what are my other options and then always check the capture moves those have to be your cannon moves in every single move pretty much don't play any automatic moves unless well there is no alternative really otherwise always makes sense just to just to check to scan the position and see if there's anything else there and that will help you and not miss resource like c takes c5 here all right i hope that was helpful and uh, as always let me know if you have any questions or anything else um, i can assist you with and well that's it for today